What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec and we're doing Olympus from Hack the Box, which was a really well laid out box. The end map you initially do, you just have to use throughout the entire box because every time you pivot through a Docker container, it releases a piece of information that makes that end map make more and more sense. It starts off with xdebug being configured in just a god awful way that provides a remote shell by hitting a page. And I'd be lying if I said I hadn't used this at least once on a pen test and been successful. Then it goes into a little bit of Wi-Fi cracking. And when this box was released, the path was cracking the Wi-Fi packets, getting the key, and then using the key to guess the username. And I hated that piece, but it is kind of realistic because in pen test, sometimes you just got to guess and things work. However, after this box was released, Unrelated, some really smart people found ways to brute force usernames out of SSH, and this box is vulnerable to that, so we'll dig into that, and I think it makes the box that much better because you use a exploit to enumerate usernames based upon the theme of the box. And after you do that, you can do a DNS zone transfer because you finally get the full uh, name of the box, do a little bit of port knocking to unlock SSH, get in, and then you can use Docker to privesk, and that privesk is very similar to LXE. It's a lot of small hops, so it's hard to explain, so let's just jump in. As always, we start off with the nmap, so nmap-sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it Olympus, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.83. This does take some time to run, so I've already run it. Looking at the results, we have quite a bit of information on the screen. The very first thing I notice is port 22 is filtered. That is the SSH port, and filtered just means we made a request out to 10.10.10.83 on port 22, and the server just ignored us altogether. And firewalls, there's a difference between dropping a packet and blocking a packet. With a dropped packet, you just drop it and ignore it completely. With a blocked packet, you generally send like a TCP reset back to the server, letting them know that port's not open. So a lot of times when you configure a firewall rule, people choose drop, and that is why we see it as filtered. So I'm guessing there's an IP tables rule around SSH. Just keep that in mind. And the only reason is because this port is not like all the others. The next thing we see is DNS is open on 53 TCP. So I'm going to guess maybe zone transfers or something like that because DNS is normally a UDP protocol. One of the few things that require TCP is a zone transfer, so that's why I'm thinking zone transfer right off the bat. Then the next thing is port 80, we have Apache listening. It looks like the server header is just Apache, so we're not leaking any OS information here. And on port 2222, we also have SSH, and it is has a unique band that just says City of Olympia. So nothing else really for the end map other than, uh, yeah, nothing. So let's just move on and check out what is happening with DNS. So the very first thing I'm going to do is a NS lookup, and I'm going to set the server to 10.10.10.83. And let's see if we can get the server to output what its host name is. In order for a zone transfer to work, we have to get the domain name. So I'm going to search like olympus.htb as just a wild guess. And we don't get anything back. And this could take a little bit to time out. So I'm just going to control C, do it again, server 10.10.10.83. The next thing I'm going to try is like 127.0.0.1. Doesn't have reverse lookup for that. I'm going to try 10, 10, 10, 83. Doesn't have reverse lookup for that. So what I'm going to do is make a new directory called DNS. And in the spirit of always having recon running in the background, we're going to create a DNS recon script to enumerate all RFC 1918 addresses, which are the loopbacks. So call this DNS enum.sh. And then let's just do um, DNS recon dash n for name server 10 10 10 83 then dash r for range and then 10 10 10 not 10 10 10 10 0 0 0 slash 8 then we want to do i think it's dash db uh dns recon help dash dash db and then dash dash db 
olympus.db. Delete that line with dd, then just use p to put the new line, and we'll do the rest. So I did 10s to go into insert mode and delete 10 characters, and we'll do 172, 16, 0, 0, 12. And we'll do the same thing here, and this time we'll do 192, 168, 0, 0, slash 16. So this is all the loopback addresses. The easiest way to remember it is everyone knows the 10, 0, 0, 172, 16, 192, 168, and this number just increments by 4 each time. So that's the easy way I do to remember the three addresses. And then we'll just run that script in the background, and it's going to do a bunch of DNS requests. So if there's a server configured for a reverse lookup at any RFC 1918 address, we'll find it there and get the full host name. So let's just rename this to DNS Recon, move to a new tab. We'll call this, I don't know, HTTP, I guess. I don't know why I started renaming it, but let's move on to enumerating Apache. Let's open up Firefox, go to 10.10.10.83, and see what Apache gives us. It's just a image, control U, we see just a CSS sheet, go there, nothing too special. I'm going to, uh, I want to save this image, not the HTML tag. Uh, view background image, copy this, we'll do a wget on it real quick, and exif tool Zeus. Do I not have exif tool? Uh, apt install zip tool. There we go. While that installs, let's just check like robots.txt. Nothing there. Still installing the tool. So let us go over to Burp, turn intercept on, go back to Firefox, make sure Foxy Proxy is configured to go to Burp, send the request. Control R to send to the repeater tab, Control Shift R to automatically switch, and then click go. And looking at the headers, we have an Apache, nothing really leaked there. The one odd thing we see is xdebug, and this is a developer thing, and with this enabled, you may be able to just um, connect to a debug instance and debug PHP live on the server. When you can debug applications, you can change the code, do all sorts of nasty things. Generally, in most configurations, the callback is forced to be on localhost, so you have to do a SSH tunnel and point port 9000 back to your development machine. In some misconfigurations, it sends it to whatever host made the request, so we will play with that. I just want to see if the image downloaded. There we go. So let's do exif tool on Zeus, and we see... Let's see, it was created April 6th. So, this web page probably got created in early 2018. That's just something to put on the back burner. We can't really enumerate what the OS is, so we're trying to get a date time around when the server was built for what type of exploits to throw at it. If we saw like 2015, maybe go down CGI bin and do Shellshock, but this looks like it's relatively recent. So, we can. Remove that file because we don't need it anymore. So let's go into the um, debug thing. And I normally use Chrome to do this. There is a Metasploit module now that Hack the Box users created after this box. I think it was um, Minato, Mumbai, and one other guy had created the module. But in order to explain it better on why it exists, let's not just exploit it with Metasploit and actually do something legitimate with it. Normally, developers will use their IDE, the integrated development environment, to hook into it. Instead of setting all that up, we'll do the easy path and just use Chrome, because Chrome has a xdebug uh, application. So if we just Google Chrome xdebug app, my computer is going really slow. Chrome Web Store. Let's kill this DNS recon. Maybe that's it. It shouldn't find anything, so normally I would have some type of enumeration always going in the background. But for the sake of the video, to speed things up, let's disable that. So adding xdebug to the Chrome apps, we can open it. 
And then let's resize this window too. So if we click listen, we're listening on port 9000. If we open a new thing, um, netstat, ALN, grep 9000, we see we are indeed listening. So in order for xdebug to work, we have to send it a HTTP request. So let's go back to burp. And all we're going to say is xdebug session start. And then equals, it has to be in an argument so like that. And this can be anything. This is just a session thing. So we'll say, please subscribe. We click go. We don't get any response back. If we go back to xdebug, we see the entire script. And now we can set like a breakpoint here. Click run. It's going to run, stop at this breakpoint, and we can actually change it. So um, it's echoing HTML. So what I'm going to do is say HTML append ipsec was here. Okay, so we have appended that. Click run to keep going. And then go back into burp. And we see we have successfully appended to the page. So let's test code execution. Um, xdebug is listening. Go back to burp. Go. And click here. And let's just do system ping 10, 10, 15, uh, 10, 10, 14, 15, I think is my IP. And we always need like dash N, I think dash C is count. You set a ping on a Linux box and don't put a count, you have no way to stop the ping sometimes. So that's why I'm just doing dash C1. And we can do TCP dump dash I for interface, ton zero ICMP. And then run this command. We see output came back, and in terminal, we got a request. So now we know we have code execution on the box. So let us turn intercept off. We'll just turn intercept off by not going through burp. Then we can go to pen test monkey reverse shell. Grab this. Copy the one that almost always works is this one. Go back into our xdebug session. Instead of pinging, let's send a shell. Put the IP, so 10, 10, 14, 15, port 9001. And we'll make sure we're listening. So NC LVNP 9001. Send this request. Go here, and we have a shell. So at this point, I can close Chrome. And we'll just play with this box where we are. So if we do hostname, bunch of gibberish, ls-la, don't see that much. Go to slash. And we can see we're in a Docker environment. If we do ifconfig, we see 172.2002. And check out home, Zeus, Ergeddon. And we have Ergeddon.sh. So let's see what that is. Bunch of text. Quite a bit to read. I don't feel like reading all that yet. So let's just see what else there is. Um, there's a captured directory. So let's go into captured. And we see capture.cap and papyrus.txt. So let's see what's in papyrus.txt. Captured while flying, I'll banish him to Olympia Zeus. So we got a bunch of Greek references right now, just based upon the name being Olympus. I think the end map had something. Now we got Zeus, Olympia. So something there. We look at captured.cap. We see it's a TCP dump. So we could base64 to 
copy and paste it to a machine. We probably could SCP it. I'm going to do something different that we haven't done before, and that's set up a Nginx listener so we can just send files over HTTP to us. So I'm going to go in Etsy, Nginx, then we want to go to sites-available, and let's look at default. There's a lot there, so let's grep-v. We don't want to see anything with a comment. And we want to grab only things that have entries on them. Send this to um, file upload. Let's edit this. So let's listen on port 8001. We don't need IPv6. The root. Uh, we're not going to have a root of a webder. We don't need any of that. We'll give it the server name of ipsec.rocks, I guess. And then the location. We want to put um, the root here. So root for www upload. So that's going to be where this directory exists. And I would make sure in your root dub 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 your apache or whatever you use as a web service configured to do html because if you can upload and php is configured people can just upload a php script and execute it and that's bad so always use care when doing this so make dir upload and we want to do dav underscore methods to set up like a web dab server put and we have to have semicolons there and that looks good. And I generally stay organized by like services on 8001, and shells are on 9001, Just how I generally stay organized. You may want to pick different numbers than 8000 and 9000 because people watch these videos and probably everyone's going to start using those. So, yeah. The next thing we want to do is ln dash s etsy nginx sites available and file upload and move this to Etsy Nginx sites enabled. And now when we restart Nginx, we can do a netstat alnp grep on 8001. We see it's listening. And if we did curl dash dash file upload, uh, We'll go in here, HTB boxes, Olympus, echo, ipsec2, please sub. So if I now do curl, file, upload, please sub, and I point it to 127.0.0.1, port 8001. Is it upload file, not file upload? Upload file. There we go. We get an internal server error. So let's look at that. Tail over log engine x uh, error.log. And we get a permission denied. So we're going to do chmod 777 for www html. And then we'll do chown www data for. Is engine x running as www data? grep engine x it is so ch own www data for www upload and i did html there out of habit uh crap that should not be like that i think 644 is a fine permission ls la for html that's fine so we want 777 on upload. Muscle memory took over there for a second. So now if we do that curl command again, we don't get an error message. And if we look at ver dub 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 upload, we get the please subscribe. If we cat that, we get the file. So this is just a good way to transfer files to our server. So let's now curl upload file capture.cap to 10 10 10 or 10 10 
14, 15, slash, uh, not slash, uh, port 8001. Go over to a box, go into upload. We get capture.cap. So let's copy this to our directory, HTB boxes, Olympus. We can close this window and we can open up capture.cap and Wireshark. And we can also stop nginx so people can't just upload files to our server. And looking at the uh, capture dump, we're on a beacon frame. We see the SSID is too close to the sun. And digging through these, let's look at tagged parameters, SSID, uh, RSN, that is robust secure network, CCM. So this is just a WPA. So I just know that by the group Cypher Suite and RSN. So let's see if we can crack this um, WPA key. So let's go to... Um, Aircrack, and what's the file name? Capture.cat. And we'll do the word list, uh, user, share, word list, rockyou.txt. And we see the estimated time is around one hour. And I don't have time for that for this video, so we're going to send it to our Kraken. In order to crack via Hashcat, we have to... Um, convert this to a hashcat capture file. So let's go and grab hashcat utils. So hashcat dash utils, GitHub. And then let's go to uh, opt get clone. And then go into source. And just type make. And if you don't have, if you get errors like pcap.h is missing, that's because you're missing the development packages. So Google what you're missing and find out what package it is. pcap.h is like lib pcap dash dev. Um, SHA things are probably going to be SSL lib dash dev. And yeah, just Google the error messages. You should be able to get it compiled. So we have a bunch of binaries now. We want to do the um, cap to hc cap x, which is just hash cat capture. And we do a input file, then an output file. And then we could also filter by ESSID or BSSID, but we're not going to worry about that. So just do HTB boxes Olympus captured dot cap. And we'll put this to HTB boxes Olympus captured dot hcapx. So it wrote two captures. Uh, and we got them right here. We can't really read that file. It's just meant for hashcat. So let's scp them to my box that I use for cracking. So scp um, captured hcap to kraken. And then we'll SSH to it. And we can move this to hashcat backslash hashes. Go into hashcat. And then we can do dot slash hashcat dash dash help grep dash i WPA. And we're going to do 2500. So dot slash hashcat dash m. 2500, then we'll specify the hash file, then the word list we want to use. And once this starts, it should crack relatively quickly. We can see it's going to take a total of nine seconds to crack or go through the whole list. So much faster than doing it on a CPU assigned to a VM. So we get the 
SSID, uh, yeah, the SSID of Too Close to the Sun, and the password is Flight of Icarus. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into Wireshark, um, edit preferences, protocols, IEEE 802.11, put a decryption key, add. This is going to be a WPA uh, password. And the key, Flight of Icarus, click OK. Make sure Enable Decryption is enabled. And now we have these packets decrypted. So we can do, oh, I don't think I said. We just looked in the beacon. The re main reason I went straight to like aircrack and stuff is because we see a bunch of deauthentications. And this just means probably a deauth attack to uh, capture a hash or something. So seeing this much is relatively bad. So we can sort by TCP or UDP and see what else is here. So we have Dropbox, DHCP offer, and we're looking for a host name. So just digging through this, DNS servers eights, doesn't look like it gave a host name. The thing joining is a OnePlus, which is a phone. We got stuff to Google, WhatsApp, but nothing too interesting. So we can close Wireshark because we're done with it. We didn't really get anything. But we do have a SSID and its password. So perhaps that is reused. So let's go up here. The SID cracked, I guess, and just put this in a file. So let us go back to our shell of the Docker thing we did, the very first thing. I'm going to cat Etsy past WD, look for potential users. We do see the user Zeus. So maybe I'll try to SSH on port 2222. The other thing I'm going to do is do a netstat ALNP, grep list. And we don't see um, SSH listening at all. I don't know what that port is. Um, that's odd. Maybe that's a Docker thing. I don't know. Yeah. But the main thing I was looking for is SSH listening here because... If it is, maybe the quad twos goes to this box. If not, may go somewhere else. So let us try to find valid host names. And if you remember back when we did the exif tool, we saw like 2014. Oh, not 2014, April. I was thinking number four. But we saw this box was back in April, and I remember a SSH username brute forcer came out relatively recently after this box retired, so that's what we're going to use to find a valid username. So if we just Google like SSH brute force username, we may find information about it. Uh, tools anytime. Let's do the last year. CVE. Uh, there we go. Username enumeration flaw. This is it. I don't know if the proof of concept is in this script, so I'm just going to Google this CVE. And we can go. That's exactly what I went to. Um, Google CVE, then GitHub. There we go. Slightly different CVE number than before, I think. 15919 is what we copied, and we went to 15473. So it looks like maybe it just wasn't fully patched and it got two CVEs. But this should be what we want. So let's clone this. Get clone. Go here, and we can look at what the... Um, example is so it wants a user list file and a host name so let's look at what example input has root and root invalid so just two host so let's do python ssh username user list example input and then the host name 10101083 10, 10, uh, 
Oh, list has a capital L. That's annoying. And see if this returns anything. Oh, we forgot port 2222. Uh, what is port? Dash dash port 2222. There we go. And we see root is a valid user, root invalid is not a valid user. So we could just edit example input and put Zeus and run this again. And we see Zeus is not a valid user. I'm going to edit the script, search for not a valid user. And I'm going to take this out because I don't want to report all the non-valid users. So now if we run this again, it should just come back not a valid user. Looks like it's in two spots. None. Okay, let's try this now. Okay, so it only comes back root is a valid user. Based upon the theme of this box, I'm going to guess it's some Greek mythological character. So let's just Google that. Greek mythological characters and create a custom word list. So let's go here. Get a list of all the characters. It's quite a bit of them. And copy the Greek cares dot text paste uh, percent s space get rid of all spaces that's fine now we have to go from capital characters to lowercase characters because chances are the username doesn't have the first character of the name capital and that's the correct thing so we'll do Greek myth dot LST. Remove the file we had to work with. And now this Greek myth list is just a list of a bunch of Greek mythological characters. So let's go back to our CVE and do the user list as Greek myth dot LST. So take a little bit to run because we gave it a lot of characters. Once it finishes though, we should have a list of valid usernames on this uh, box. And one does come back, Icarus is a valid user. So let us look at the um, SSID cracked and we have probably the passwords flight of Icarus maybe. So let's try SSH Icarus at 10 10 10 83. And we have to specify the port. And the password doesn't work. So let's try the other one, too close to the sun. And that didn't work either. Did I misspell something? Yes, I did. I see. A R U S. Try this again. Flight of Icarus. And then we'll try the SSID. And we get in. And when we did this box, if you remember, I'd said the CVE wasn't out when the box was released. The intended way is for you to see Flight of Icarus and figure out Icarus is the username. So we just changed up a little bit doing a SSH enumeration to get valid usernames and the SSID was the password. So now that we're on the box, let us do some more enumeration. ls-la slash, and we see we are still in a Docker environment. So what else can we do with this? Let's check our home directory, and we see a file help of the gods text. So Reading that file, we see Athena Goddess will guide you through the dark, Weta Rhodes, CTF Olympus.htb. If you remember in the beginning of the video, we were trying to do a DNS zone transfer. 
because it was listening on TCP, but we didn't know what domain it was. So we started that DNS recon to try to brute force a bunch of things to try to get a domain. We couldn't do that. We finally found it, so let's go back and try that zone transfer again. Before we do that, let's just stay organized and rename our tmux panes. So put them to the sessions we're on. Copy ctfolympus.htb, and let's try a zone transfer again. So dig axfr, that is the zone transfer, at 10.10.10.83. 10, this is the DNS server IP, and then ctfolympus.htb is the domain. So we see NS1, Prometheus, open a uh, temporal portal of Hades, 3456-8234-62431, and steal the fire. Going through other things, it doesn't really look like there's that much information, but this is interesting. And even further back in the video, at the very beginning, we saw SSH was filtered, and it wasn't configured like the other. So let's try putting a port knock thing, just like we did in Pinky, and seeing if that opens up the filtered port, which was SSH. So I'm going to copy this, because that looks like a password to me. And we'll do nmap-pn, so we don't do ICMP pings. Then we want to do max retries and set that to zero so it doesn't retry anything. And then just do dash p 34568234 Then the IP address, which is 10101010.83. And then do another nmap and see port 22 at the end. Doing that, and we still see 22 as filtered. Try that a few times to see if it opens up. And we do. And the reason why it did that is just because Nmap was doing it too fast for NOCD, which is probably the port mapping service. If we set the dash dash scan delay is equal to 0.5, it'll be a little more reliable. Or not. I think it's dash dash scan delay. Try it. Come on. Do we have to do like 0 0.5? Let's go nmap scan delay. Click on the first link. Scan delay. There's got to be a better way to do port knocking. I'm sure there is, and I'm just ignorant to it. We'll just do it a few times. So SSH Prometheus at that, and see if we get a SSH connection. Missed it that time. Just try it a few times. And one of these times it'll work. Let's set the scan delay to 1. And that still didn't open up. Open the portal to Hades. We'll try point 0.2. Doesn't look like the portal wants to open. So let's see. May have to find a different way to do port knocking. Because that is not good. So let's see. Let's open up Wireshark and see actually what's going on. Is Nmap just sending these out of order? Or do we have to do something with the order? So, listen on ton zero. Send this. And of course, as soon as I open up Nmap, it works. Oh, that's annoying. See, did Nmap do it in the correct order? So three four five six eight two three four six two four three one. Yep. So I guess the service is just picky. So now that we're on Prometheus, let us check if we're in a Docker container still. We don't see that Docker M, so we are not doing an if config command not found. Let's do IPP or uh, IP ADDR, and we see. This is indeed the host. We see our IP address, 
the bridges for the Docker containers, Docker itself, etc. So I'm going to check the groups because like LXC, Docker is set UID and you can do the same type of attack, which is binding the root of your OS into a container, which you have root permission and then getting root over the disk. So the very first thing to do with that is Docker container help and we want to do ls to list all the docker containers we could upload and create a whole new docker container but why bother going through that when we don't have to and you can always enter a docker container with uh, docker let's see what is it docker run help and let's see what the command is uh, I think it's just docker run and then the name, so like Olympia bash. Docker run. Docker container ls, let's get the names. Docker run Olympia bash. It's not it. Um, we want, I think I have to specify dash ti. There we go. So now we're in the Olympia container and Olympia was the SSH server, I believe. So if we go to slash home, we can see Icarus and that's help of the gods to prove we are in that container. So we could go pillage uh, Rodhi's, which is the DNS server or Rhodes. I don't even know Greek mythology that well. Um, R-O-D-H-E-S. Why didn't it not let me in that? Oh, I am in it. Home. Am I in it? Host name. Yeah. So this doesn't have a user there. Root. Nothing here. So that is entering Docker containers. If we wanted to, there is a. Uh, dash V to bind mount a volume. So what we're going to do is go back to Olympia. It could be any Docker container. Do dash V. We're going to bind mount slash to uh, slash mount. Please subscribe. And then enter Olympia. And if we go into slash mount, there is a please subscribe directory. And going here, we are now inside of the host OS is slash. We could read root.txt and to further prove that we could probably go to like Etsy hosts and we're on Olympus. So that is the box. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care and I will see you all next week.